All right, this is a video to uh, show the installation of the Zumo XT on my uh, KTM 1290 Super Venture R. So here's the box. Here's the GPS. I'll open that here in a second. And then on the uh, mount here, here's my old GPS. I had a 660 um, Garmin. So let me take that off here. And that's the mount. Um, that's obviously got to be replaced with a new mount and I'm going to feed it in through powering it through uh, the aux connectors uh, behind the headlight. So let me uh, unbox this. Okay, so here's uh, the contents of what comes with the Garmin XT. Got my user manual, installation manual, quick start guide, the uh, GPS unit. Here's the mounting system and that's going to go onto my existing mount. Comes with some RAM mount options. Um, I'm not going to use these because I already have a GPS mount that I will mount to. That's the KTM mount and then the, the hardware for mounting. All right. Okay, so first part, first steps for me is just um, going to. Uh, do this power through the headlight. So I'm gonna get all this, the windshield, and the headlight stuff out of the way. So uh, I can install the GPS routing the uh, power cables. All right, so there's the knob down here. You have to turn this all, that's probably hard to see on video, but uh, you have to turn it basically all the way out to get this windshield to come all the way out and then you can take out the whole thing. Uh, there's also a couple screws that you need to take out which are here. I think, I don't know if you can see them, but yeah, right there. Uh, that the windshield pivots on and then the whole unit comes out. So we'll work on that. All right, on this side, I forgot to mention, there's the, uh, the phone box. And what you need to do is you need to take, um, there's a screw up here near the top that you need to take off the phone box and then the screw for the light housing is behind the screw box. So we're gonna do that right now. Video's going fast. Okay, so what you can see here is uh, I've got a bunch of things. This was the headlight connector. So this is ACC2, which is, um, I believe, powered on continuously. But let's check that. With our little multimeter. So. Need help? Yeah. yeah, you hold that. 
So I'm going to put this into ground. This here. Zero? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means ACC2 is not. Uh, so this is ACC2 is when only when the engine is on. Mm -hmm. Now the GPS though is hooked up to this other one, which is ACC1. And ACC1 is hot all the time. And so that allows um, my GPS to charge when the when the bat when the engine's off, etc. I think you could probably use either one. I believe ACC one is well, actually no, I think ACC2 is higher amperage, but I think it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to use ACC1 um, again because I just like having that availability of, of having my GPS powered all the time, even if the battery's off. Especially because uh, if I turn off the engine, then the GPS immediately goes, lost power, oh, I gotta, I want to turn off and I don't want... Typically, I don't want that. I would say if you're installing a GPS and you do want it to turn off when you turn off the bike, then I would use ACC2. Uh, for me, I like to have the GPS not give me that prompt pretty much any time, and that keeps it constant power. So we're going to cut uh, this heat shrink that I put on the original one and then feed this wire out through the... Uh, front here where the original GPS mount was and then disconnect that and then we'll feed in the new one uh, through the same route. Okay, so to, to get out my old one, it had a big bracket on it, so I had to pull out the headlight. Um, I snapped a little secure thing in. Uh, I don't really think that's going to be super critical, so I'm just going to put it back together with that. But I would say if you do need to unplug the main display, which is what this is for, uh, be careful. Um, and now we're going to feed the new line down behind the uh, LCD screen and out through here. Um, and then uh, actually, so the way this, I already put this in, but what we're gonna do is take the screw out, pull this out, feed it up behind here, cause that'll be easier than feeding the rest of that down um, because it has this little, uh, part of it and then I'll attach this back to this and attach it to the uh, the old mount and then put it on
Okay, so uh, obviously uh, I got this wired up now. Um, what the heck here? Oh, yeah. So um, obviously be careful. Uh, I actually shorted this when I was uh, testing it and, uh, you know, caught one of the fuses, fixed the fuse, good to go. So, this is the piece that mounts. Um, some people don't like this on the KTM. I haven't had any issues with it, but uh, it mounts with this bracket and spacer. So, I'm going to just disconnect this, see how uh, this one will fit, basically like that. And then we'll be pretty good to go. Okay, so hooked up the uh, main display, um, tucked in the uh, GPS wires back there, try to get all this stuff out of the way. This is gonna head, uh, hook up back up to the headlight, and then I'm gonna put the headlight back on here. Oh, and for the headlight, uh, what you gotta do is get this thing sort of started. Um, into the bottom first and then I like to uh, put it back here try to get these screws started and then pull it in the rest of the way and now for um, what I found is that if I get a half inch socket it kind of snugly fits inside of the headlight adjuster and then I can use a drill um, you know just a my standard Ryobi and then I can spin that thing a lot faster because I've done it by hand a few times and it is uh, a lot of work to go in and out uh, you have to go around you know dozens of times so this makes quick work of that um, so just a little little tip to kind of make it a little easier
All right, I got everything hooked up. Uh, got the GPS mounted. You can see where it's at. Obviously moves as I move the windshield here. And uh, looks like it'll be pretty good. A um, bunch of options this thing has. I'm sure you can read a lot of reviews on what this thing can do. And I can see that it's uh, charging, which means it's connected to the battery, which is what I wanted. So if I uh, start it up, make sure my screen's good. Everything else looks pretty good. Then to turn it off, just hold the button back here, and then it'll tell you off. All right, and that's the uh, completed product.